is the labor market today healthy or is it unhealthy? That's the main thing we want to know. This is At Brookings, a weekly in-depth look at issues behind the news. This week, what do unemployment numbers really say about the economy? Every month, the Bureau of Labor Statistics releases a report on the nation's labor market. How many people are working? How high is the unemployment rate? How many have gone back to work? And how many have given up looking for a job? The answers are all in this report. This data is important for policymakers, legislators, employers, and even workers, notes senior fellow Gary Burtless as he takes a closer look. The Labor Department issues two numbers, two sets of numbers actually, every month. One uh, is based on a survey of households, uh, and it's on the basis of that, those survey responses that we estimate the unemployment rate uh, and less widely known, there's also a measure of how many of adults in the United States are employed. But there's a second set of numbers released every month, too, based on an em employer survey. Uh, interviews are conducted of uh, personnel officers in lots of companies around the United States. Those companies say how many uh, people are on the company payrolls. The Bureau of Labor Statistics estimates how much employment rose in the months. Uh, and between these two sets of numbers, they provide a pretty timely and reasonably accurate picture of how the labor market is doing. There's lots of other statistics about the economy, how much auto sales are rising, how much retail sales are changing, uh, what's the state of manufacturing, and so on. But for measuring the overall health of the economy, and most particularly the health of the economy as it relates to ordinary workers, these two sets of statistics, how much has employment risen and how much has the unemployment rate changed, are pretty accurate, timely indicators of the overall state of the economy. We take um, an unemployment rate of, let's say, 8%, which doesn't include the number of people who stopped looking for work, and if we included that number, that would change the employment rate, it sort of makes it look like the numbers can be massaged. So how true are they really? Our definition of unemployment is uh, those people who are jobless but who have looked actively for work in the last four weeks. If we had looked at statistics around the world 40 years ago, lots of people estimated their, uh, their unemployment rates by how many people were collecting an unemployment insurance check. Well, if we did that in the United States, it would reduce our unemployment rate roughly in half because only about half of the unemployed collect an unemployment insurance check in a given month. So relative to that definition, our un measured unemployment rate is considerably higher. Uh, if we counted everybody who looked for work any time in the last 12 months instead of just in the last four weeks, that would increase the measured rate of unemployment. Well, there's that camp that argues that perhaps it's better to look at the duration of unemployment, how long someone is out of work, for a more accurate and true assessment of our unemployment rate. When there's very short average durations of unemployment, that usually means that uh, you can find a job reasonably quickly, but it doesn't always mean that. There also would be a very short duration of uh, average unemployment at the point that the economy has gone into a steep recession. Why? Because a lot of the people that are currently jobless have just lost their job because so many hundreds of thousands of people have been laid off in the last couple of months. So uh, the duration of unemployment is uh, a little bit ambiguous uh, all by itself, but fundamentally it's telling us a story about how difficult it is to get reemployed once uh, you lose your job or upon entering the workforce, for example, right after you graduate from high school. Well, give me an understanding of how companies hire staff. There are external factors that really influence when and how much hiring they do sometimes. Isn't that so? Over the last 30 years or so, uh, financial markets have put a bigger premium on controlling costs. And one way to control costs is to hold down the number of employees who are producing whatever the company is producing or reducing the compensation that they're paying to the workers already on their payrolls. And 
gradually over time, I think financial markets show a lot of evidence that they're giving more credit to those companies that are very good at controlling their payroll costs, either by holding down employment or holding down the compensation payments they're making to their employees. And the last five years have certainly seen uh, lots of evidence of both kinds of trends. Well, when the unemployment rate drops, does that have any sort of psychological impact on people looking for work? Does it spur the need or, or the interest in going out and finding a job? This is a very well-known phenomenon. Uh, when the job market gets healthier, people tend to come out of the woodwork. Uh, people who would not have thought about being job seekers or holding jobs uh, when the unemployment rate is much higher come into the workforce, they begin to look for a job. It makes a big difference if you think it's easy to find a job or, uh, uh, or very difficult to find a job. So yes, having a low unemployment rate certainly brings people into the workforce. It, adds to people's willingness to search for a job because they think there'll be a, a better payoff to searching for a job since it's more likely an employer will actually offer them one. Gary, who really bears the burden of being unemployed? You could argue and say that those people who are working are carrying the weight of those who are unemployed, but you say the situation isn't really quite that simple. A high unemployment rate does impose a uh, burden on the people who remain employed. But the thing to bear in mind is uh, that except in the most generous unemployment uh, insurance uh, systems, and the United States has one of the least generous unemployment systems in the world, in the rich industrialized world, uh, it is the unemployed who are actually bearing most of the cost of uh, high joblessness. They're Earnings have been lost when their unemployment benefits end, maybe all of the income replacement that they have received as a result of losing their jobs comes to an end. Uh, many of them lose health insurance benefits at the same time they lose their jobs because they cannot afford the premiums that would be needed to keep their old health insurance plan going. Uh, without uh, the unemployment benefits, their incomes essentially come to an end. So. It is the unemployed who bear most of the cost. Uh, high unemployment imposes a very unequal burden across the population. Stay up to date with the latest research, learn about Brookings events, and search our directory of experts, all from your mobile device. To download Brookings for your BlackBerry, Android, iPhone, or iPad, go to brookings.edu mobile.